Welcome to this edition of Inside Bobcat Athletics. I'm Jenny Schmerber. Coach Shai Harrington is entering his 14th season as the head of Texas State Baseball. We'll talk with him about how the level of competition has evolved as well as the evolution of Bobcat Ballpark. We're going to throw it down to the dugout with Brant and Coach Harrington. Here we are in Bobcat Ballpark with Bobcat head coach Shai Harrington and season number 14 got underway for your coach this past week with the CenturyLink Invitational and this is kind of start by talking about the fact that baseball is back and how does it feel now that the season's underway? It feels good. I mean, obviously, they, you know, I, I told our players before we even got started on the first game on Friday, they had worked hard enough to reward themselves with an opportunity to play great baseball. Um, obviously, coming out of the weekend with one win and two losses wasn't what we had hoped for, or what we thought we would come out of the weekend with. But the, the exciting part for us is we're, we're so new. Um, and to come out of there with the talented teams that we're playing in this tournament and have an opportunity to win all three games. Um, is a positive way for us to spin it right now and to look at it, but also kind of a way for us to believe in what our future can become. Uh, and so I was excited to get back to hear the baseballs, you know, banging around a little bit and, uh, and also to start with such a great tournament. Uh, the, all four teams are NCAA type teams and uh, I thought the talent level was above anything we've ever had here at one time. You know, we probably had 60-something scouts here on, on Friday and Saturday, so it's fun to be back in the swing of it. Well, you got 13 runs over the weekend in the three games, all coming in the sixth inning or later. Um, if you can, just talk, talk to us about how you feel like the bats were swinging for you in the openers. We felt all along that, that going into the season that the offense was we were going to have to change our approach. You know, historically, you've seen enough games, uh, particularly in the last probably five or six years. We'd sit in there on a 27-out game, and we would see how many we could, you know, hit over here on the net. And because uh, we had, you know, a little bit more physical, uh, approaches and guys that uh, the home run was part of their game and so uh, we've had to change that a little bit we start to grind at bats and so hopefully the plan of attack would be that if we could score early it's great and it would be beneficial for us but if you watch uh, we're hopeful that our guys get better as the game goes on because they are we're going to have to incorporate doing different things than what we've done in the past offensively. We do know that a strength for you in recent years has been your pitching and in the uh, opening weekend series of the tournament uh, Taylor Black and Kyle Finnegan combined to give you 18 strikeouts. What did you take from the performances of those two? I was really pleased with Kyle. I mean, I, I got to be honest with you, our Friday night guy has been so good for the last seven years. And, um, you know, and Kyle needed to go out. It was new. We don't have the returning Friday night. We don't have Carson Smith, Travis Blue. And I, I was proud of the way he went out there. There were a lot of guys here to see him, um, you know, professionally, and that adds to the anxiety of getting out there alone on top of being the first game of the year and stuff. And so I was pleased with his competitiveness. I've always been pleased with his stuff, um, but I was really pleased with his competitiveness. I thought Taylor Black was tremendous because their pitcher was, was exceptional. Um, and for Taylor to match him up, you know, inning for inning, I thought showed tremendous competitiveness on, on Taylor's behalf and gave us a chance to win, which we did. Uh, and so I was pleased overall. Uh, and to be honest with you, and for the most part, uh, you know, we walked a few too many this weekend. That's something we'll improve on and get better. Scott Grist was, was good at times on Sunday, too. And so uh, that staff is going to get better as it, as it goes on. Over the weekend, an average of 1,700 fans were here at Bobcat Ballpark, and, and certainly, you know, this is year five of the uh, of the ballpark, and it's been a tremendous um, advantage for you in recruiting and really in playing games here uh, on game days. What does it mean to have the support that you do from the Bob Bobcat fans? A, a lot. I mean, I, I mean, I can't say it over and over and over. I can go out in the community now, and, and, and this, this is the way we I envisioned something being a long time ago to go. Um, and, and have the community come to the games. You know, our, our alumni come to the games. Uh, our students are starting to, to, to come to the games more often. We need more of them. Uh, but the community's coming. Um, and, you know, you come out here on a weekend and on a Tuesday night, this is kind of the place to be um, in the community to come out and see your friends and have a good time. Bring the kids because I, I hear my uh, friends of mine who have kids the same age as mine talk about they get out here and the kids just they have a great time. They run around, they enjoy it. And, uh, and so it's fun. It, it's a great crowd. It's a good home crowd. It paid off yesterday in the seventh inning uh, when we scored the eight runs. 
He could feel the momentum. Uh, we have had a, a home field advantage here for years, and, and this team will, will get back to where it's important for them to and, and, uh, as the season goes on. You, you mentioned the great quality competition in the opening tournament uh, here at Bobcat Ballpark, and you look at the schedule as a whole. Again, Big 12 was on the schedule, the SEC, the Pac-12, uh, Rice out of Conference USA, another loaded schedule for here in 2013. What does it mean to play some of these power programs? I think if you're trying to be um, – one of those programs you have to play those people you have to understand and have a great appreciation of the level of play the speed of play uh, and the competitiveness of that play and uh, so that part is step one step two uh, from a recruiting standpoint the kids who come here to play expect to play those kinds of teams too because we compete with those guys now recruiting wise the third thing is that the, the fans the alumnus um, the, the student body um, as you very well know, they, they coordinate their thoughts with those kinds of teams because that's where their friends go to school. And those are the teams and the people that they hear about in the newspaper and the media across the state of Texas the most. And so they, they want that. Um, they deserve that. They, they, they want to be able to go up and say, we played against a &M. Did you go to the Aggie game? Did you go to the Rice game? Um, and it's important for them and, and for our community that uh, those types of teams are coming here because they associate well. You know, I mean, it's like anything else. You pick up the paper, there are a lot of teams who get to the front page of the paper um, because of their name. And so Texas State needs to be in there baseball-wise playing against those guys often enough. Coach, in your 14 seasons, what have you noticed about the uh, ever-evolving competition in college baseball? You know, I, I, we, a friend of mine was a scout um, the other day. He and I were having this conversation. He'd been a college coach for 20 years. And um, the game has changed because there's more mid-majors that are playing baseball at a higher level. Um, you know, Texas State's one of those programs now that, you know, you go out and recruit some of the better players. And UTA is the same way, UTSA. And, and though these programs have, have, have grown up and now are putting emphasis on baseball. And so there's, there's more administrations that are, that are looking at college baseball as a revenue generator. They're not going to be a revenue maker, but a revenue generator in the sense that generating interest from your alumnus and uh, the community and, and having 1,700 people at a game, that's impressive. Um, you know, and now we, we're up to almost 800 season tickets this year. Our goal is to get to 1,000. We'll get there at some point in time. Uh, and the days come into Texas State baseball where, and, and sooner than we hope, that, you know, Having 2,500 and 3,000 at a game and hosting regionals is going to be a part of the lifestyle here. We're getting closer to that. The facility and the changes in, in has helped us do that. But it's also we're a part of the history of college baseball now because we've helped kind of change the dynamic of it some too. Coach, as always, appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, the Bobcats have four games this week, including a three-game series here at Bobcat Ballpark against the University of Houston. We hope to see you come by for tickets. Go online to txtbobcats.com. Bree Dawson from San Antonio, Texas. I'm number 11 and I'm a guard. I'm a senior. Coming into the season, I was really excited because I love working with these coaches. It's my second year and I love the team. We just have good team chemistry and hoping to finish up the season strong. The team is full of characters. They're hilarious. I love being around them because they're always something to do and they'll always keep you laughing. My major is teaching and I want to teach elementary students. After the break, we'll talk about men's golf. Born and raised in Texas. But when I'm on tour across the country, you'd be amazed at the crazy stuff I hear about my home state. Like some people seriously believe we all ride horses to work. <laughs> but some people think Texans only wear one kind of shoe. Everyone thinks we always wear a certain kind of accessory. Young lady, you're not leaving the house dressed like that. Now put this on. Now go shine. I've also heard in our spare time we all practice the fine art of bull riding. Law looks good, Bob. 
Yeah, it's good in there. And people always assume we barbecue at every meal. Kids, breakfast! Okay, they might have us on that one. But there's one claim about us Texans that is true. And that's how much when we're away from home, we miss our H-E-B. And if you're not from here, well, you just don't get it. Now where in the world did I park? <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Welcome back to Inside Bobcat Athletics. I'm Jenny Schmerber. Men's golf just finished up its first tournament of the spring season this past week. Brant Freeman talks with coach Shane Howell about how he gets the best out of his team as an individual sport, as well as the new Jim and Carol West practice facility. Thanks, Jenny. And here we are with uh, Shane Howell, head men's uh, golf coach here at Texas State, and the Bobcats com coming off the Oak Hill Invitational. And uh, coach, you had uh, three, uh, two players finish in the top 35. Very competitive tournament in San Antonio, um, featuring several Big 12 schools. If you can, just tell us how you, how you feel like your, your golfers fared. Uh, it was a little bit disappointing. Uh, we had high hopes. We'd had a good month of practice going in. Uh, unfortunately, one of our best players, Luis Thiel, uh, uh, pulled a muscle in his back on Friday before we left, so he wasn't uh, able to attend. So uh, we inserted one of our younger players in there and uh, uh, just just had a few uh, bumps and bruises along the way, but uh, overall it was good to get our feet wet in the spring season. Uh, it's a long season in the spring, uh, all the way until the end of April uh, for the WAC championship. So uh, we did some good things. Uh, we learn from our bad things and uh, move forward to our next tournament. Yeah, and you have three tournaments coming up this next month in March, and you have two in April before uh, the WAC uh, tournament. So what's the, the competition look like between now and then? Really good. Uh, we go to Louisiana Classics next and uh, Louisiana Lafayette's tournament. Um, it's a very strong field. The last three national champion individual champions have played in this field, uh, two from Illinois and uh, one from LSU. Both Illinois and LSU will be back in the field. I think um, probably eight of the top 15 schools there played in the national finals last year. Uh, so it'll be a very, very um, tough event for us. Um, the golf course is great um, and uh, guys are looking forward to it. Tell us a little bit about your golfers. I know this is a very young roster, four freshmen for you in the spring. Yeah, uh, a young, young group of guys, but a bunch of hard working guys. Um, they've gotten better since uh, they arrived here in September. Uh, and uh, they, they just keep uh, learning from each tournament out and keep getting better. It's, it's been a fun group to work with. Take us through the process of what you do to prepare your golfers for, every, for each and every tournament. Uh, you know, back home we really work on the, on the little things, the chipping, the putting. A uh, big thing is the wedge game. Uh, we have new technology this year called TrackMan. It's a, it's a radar tracking system. Uh, not only ad analyzes golf swings, but also uh, allows them to really hone in on their, on their yardages with each club, but especially um, the numbers inside of 120 yards. Um, we work uh, hours on end. I'm sure they're sick of me uh, working on uh, wedges, but uh, it's, it's a big thing we work on getting prepared for tournaments. Speaking of practice, I know back in October, the announcement of the uh, new Jim and Carol West golf practice facility uh, for Texas State. How big will that be for you moving forward with the program? Game changer. Uh, you know, before this, we didn't have a home. Uh, we went a little bit of here, a little bit there, a little bit everywhere. Now we have a permanent home where our guys know that every single day they can go uh, and get reps in, um, a place where they feel comfortable at. Um, they're not walking on eggshells around the membership. Um, it is their home, and uh, for recruiting, it's going to be huge for us. Um, it's, you can't even measure it. Uh, now you bring guys on campus, obviously uh, the great academic institution that we have, uh, the beautiful scenery around the river, uh, but now you take them out to our home golf course, the Jim and Carol West uh, practice facility, and it's uh, really going to be something and, uh, something I'm looking forward to, to, to build on going forward. Well, Coach, best of luck in your next tournament in Lafayette, Louisiana, coming up uh, March 4th and 5th. Thank you very much, Bram. All right, the Jim West Invitational for the women's golf team, a very dominant effort. Here's Coach Mike Akers and a few of the golfers talking about their performance earlier this week. This marks the fifth year in a row we're able to, to win our spring tournament, which is very exciting that we, um, you know, that we're able to to beat uh, teams on our home course, which we should do. But um, the wind and the weather played havoc this week, and uh, we kept fighting and, and ended up in a good place. Yesterday was very windy. I have rarely played in that much wind, but um, I think we did fine. And um, of course, there were places where you could save some shots, but. With wind, it's always really tough to uh, keep the scores low. Nice shot. 
it's important for our team because we're pretty highly ranked, so we want to keep up with that ranking. And also, it's always good to have a win to boost our confidence going into the next tournament. If you look at the rankings, we're the best ranked team, so we should win. But like I said, the best team doesn't always win. Unfortunately, in this situation, we were able to win. The past many tournaments that I've played, I've finished probably top five at best, second place at best. So this is really good. I'm very satisfied with my win. It's definitely important for us to win, especially this tournament where we were definitely the highest ranked team. So we had to win and we had to win by a lot. After the break, we'll talk about women's tennis. Innovation, exploration, creative discovery. These are the trademarks of Texas State University. As the state's newest emerging research university, we're transforming your world one mind at a time. Your world, our research. Texas State University, the rising star of Texas. Welcome back to Inside Bobcat Athletics at TXStateBobcats.com. I'm Jenny Schmerber. The women's tennis team is bouncing back into action this year, and the competition is tougher than ever. Here's Brant with Coach Plunkett. That's right, Jenny. So far, the competition has been pretty stiff for the Bobcats this spring, but so far, the three and two, five matches into the spring season. And right now, Tori Plunkett, head coach, joining us. And uh, Coach, if you can, just give us your impressions of the early start in the spring for you so far. Uh, well, so far with uh, everybody returning, we have a couple newcomers that come in. We're looking pretty strong, but at the same time, we um, finished last year uh, a, with a, a loss that was kind of devastating to us. And so we recovered from that, and I think our win against uh, UTSA uh, proved that we still, we still got it, and I'm um, looking forward to the WAC conference. Yeah, the, well, the WAC competition, the WAC championships will be held in Denver this April. You have 14 matches between now and then. Take us through the lay of the land and what the schedule looks like for you between now and April. Uh, it's going to be very interesting for us. Uh, the difference with the WAC is we have the high altitude that we have to deal with as well as indoor competition possibly. Um, we go to California uh, and again, the West Coast plays different than the East Coast as far as strategies and et cetera. So uh, we haven't played a lot on the West Coast and those type of players or those type of teams. Um, so we'll have a great idea uh, how Seattle, San Jose, um, actually we play Louisiana Tech and New Mexico State there. So. Um, that will be an excellent start off for us. Obviously, we've already played UTSA, but for us, um, it's getting to know those type of players and et cetera. So then we, after that, we head off to Utah. Utah will be extremely difficult. One, um, we have no idea. We're thinking that uh, possibly some high altitude we'll have to deal with and then the indoor competition. And we'll be playing against Utah and Denver, which are um, used to the indoors. And it's a different style of game. Um, we've had a little bit of experience with that, um, but at the same time, too, um, it's going to it's going to be new for us and, and definitely a challenge. But um, the players are looking forward to it and extremely excited. Then we head off to Idaho and we play there. Uh, and for me at this point right now, those are three flying trips for us. Um, we also have a home match where we play and host some matches as well too. And at that point right now, I, I have to realize that uh, making sure the kids are still physically fit, that they're you know, not getting run down by the travel. After speaking with some of the other um, fall sports, uh, that was one of the huge uh, drawbacks is the flying trips. And we're not uh, used to that as well, too. So um, at that point, we'll come home, have a senior weekend, and then head off to Denver. Well, Coach, I guess with such a road-heavy schedule coming up, it's been kind of a nice thing to start off the spring playing so many matches here at home. Very much so. Um, we're obviously very comfortable um, at home. It gives us, a, 
you know, for after last uh, year, we had an unbelievable year last year, probably the, one of the best in Texas State history. But at the same time, too, we were so close and it was difficult for the players to swallow. So to play here at home where we're comfortable with it, um, get into an excellent routine. Uh, yeah, it's been it's been very, very nice. Well, so far in the spring, a doubles competition, 28 and 13 in sets. Take us through some of the best duos you have on the roster. Uh, right now, I would probably uh, say Jesse, uh, Jessica Katz and Melissa Haddad. Uh, they've been playing for three years now. This, excuse me, this is their third year. Uh, they're, they're an awesome team. They work very, very well together. Uh, Gabrielle Rojas is a very good doubles team, and she is paired up with Monica Peratt. Uh, Monica's new to the team, and she stepped right into the way we play doubles, and they are playing very, very well right now. They ended up winning the doubles point for us or clinching the doubles point for us against UTSA. So um, we have a reputation of playing pretty good doubles, and so I think that's where that record kind of stands out for that. And, of course, with that win over UTSA, the Bobcats are 1-0 so far in, in WAC competition. And what about singles uh, competitors? Coach, who's been standing up for you so far this spring? Um, that would be Mariana Perez, and she's at our number five position. She's always been very, very solid um, in singles. Uh, her freshman, sophomore, junior year, she's now a senior. She's experienced, um, and she stepped right back into where she's always has been. Um, and the other one is Jessica Katz. Both of them did exceptionally well this weekend. They were both undefeated. Uh, and they're, they're junior, senior, and they're kind of leading the team right now with the singles. Well, Coach, SMU coming to town this Saturday. Looking forward to it. Now here's a look at other events coming up at Texas State. Thanks, Brant. The men's basketball plays Lamar and Beaumont on Saturday, February 23rd as part of the ESPN's Bracket Busters. The Texas Shootout Softball Tournament takes place at Bobcat Softball Field starting Thursday as the Bobcats take on North Texas at 5 and Baylor at 7. Bobcat Baseball continues its home stand versus Houston on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you can't make it to any of these games, remember, all home games are streamed live on txstatebobcats.com. For more information or to catch up on Bobcat Athletics, visit txstatebobcats.com. This has been Inside Bobcat Athletics. I'm Jenny Schmerber.